Hi, welcome to the Authentic Gardening channel where I talk about plants that we humans have a deep relationship with. Either we grow them or just admire them or consume them. And I hope you share my deep love and admiration for the plant people or plant kingdom. The reason for this particular video is very personal to me. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine gave me seeds of this purple corn that he acquired somewhere in a Pueblo in Southwest USA. I started growing it and now I'm in love. Look at these kernels. They look like jewels, like polished precious stones of a variety of colors from midnight black to garnet like red to a mystical blue-gray. They taste wonderful, not to mention that being around the whole plant through the growth and harvest periods feels like total privilege to me. Corn appears to be one of the most consumed grains around the world. But where and how did it become such a popular companion to the humankind? And what is corn besides being a vegetable? from the botanical point of view? Let's find out the answers to these questions together. Just because I'm such a fan of plants, I will start with a little bit of botany. This majestic plant called corn or maize in English-speaking countries or maize in Spanish-speaking countries belongs to the Z maize species of Z genus of flowering plants in the grass family. Zimaeus is monoecious type of plant, meaning its male and female flowers while growing on the same plant are separated. These tassels on top of the corn plant are clusters of numerous male flowers. While the ears of future corn are clusters of female flowers wrapped in husks or modified leaves, showing only its pistils, we call corn silk. Each thread of a pistil or corn silk has to catch pollen dropped by the male flowers from above and deliver it to its flower hidden under the husks in order to produce one fruit or kernel of corn. There are about 600 kernels on one cob and up to four cobs on one stem. So imagine all the work the plant has to do to produce a good harvest. Plants do a better job delivering well-formed full ears of seeds if planted in bigger numbers. All pistils have a better chance then to catch the pollen spread around the field by the wind. Maize is an annual plant which means that its life cycle between the sprouting of a seed and the death of the whole plant at the end of its fruit production fits in the growing season of one year. By itself, corn would have a hard time reproducing. Even if a cob happens to fall to the ground and the seed starts sprouting, the sheer amount would cause them choke each other out of nutrients. In order to survive as species, corn plants need human assistance even more than human species need corn. There is no such thing as wild corn in nature. How did corn, as we know it now, come into being? Besides Zeomaius, the genus of Zea contains four more species of grassy plants commonly known as Theosynthes which are native to Mesoamerica. Genetic research found one type of Teosinti that all modern corn came from. It grows in the southwestern part of Mexico near Balsas River, thus called Balsas Teosinti. Both genetic and archaeological research shows that the domestication of Teosinti and transformation it into corn started about 9,000 years ago. 
The Olmec and Maya civilizations cultivated maize in numerous varieties for centuries before Europeans began to settle throughout Mesoamerica after 1492. Spanish settlers much preferred wheat bread to maize because maize flour could not be substituted for wheat for communion bread. In Christian belief, only wheat could undergo transubstantiation and be transformed into the body of Christ. Some Spaniards worried that by eating indigenous foods which they did not consider nutritious, they would weaken and risk turning into Indians. Yet maize was a better crop to grow in its native land, and the necessity to find new food supplies in the new lands drove newcomers to adopt native crops, including maize and potatoes, by 1994. Widespread cultivation of corn began in southern Spain in the early 16th century, after which it quickly spread to the rest of the Spanish Empire, Italy and West Africa. By the 17th century it was a common peasant food in southern Western Europe, including Portugal, Spain, southern France and Italy. By the 18th century, it was the chief food of the southern French and Italian peasantry, especially in the form of polenta in Italy. From there, maize spread all over the world because of its ability to grow in diverse climates. It had many advantages over wheat and barley, yielding two and a half times the food energy per unit of a cultivated area could be harvested in successive years from the same plot of land and grew in wildly varying altitudes and climates. According to the genetic research of ancient corn kernels, maize moved north from one community to another, from Mexico into the territories of what now is the southwestern U.S. through highland corridors along the Sierra Madre Mountains. About 4,000 years ago, it appeared in New Mexico and Arizona. 2,000 years after the New Mexico-Arizona introduction, another improved genetic variety with larger cobs and larger kernels was introduced through the Pacific coast of California. Now the U.S. is by far the world's largest producer and exporter of corn, followed by China, Brazil, Argentina, Ukraine, and India. The true diversity of modern corn varieties is unknown to most consumers. I found one seed bank in Tuscan, Arizona, called Native Seeds Search, that claims it has all over 500 accessions of corn seed, which means in plain English that they've collected over 500 distinct uniquely identified samples of corn seeds. Now that's quite a variety compared to the variety you get at your local grocery store here in the US. The information about all the corn varieties that exist out there and their nutritional value I put in the next video. See you there!